time, is it not? Yeah, you know, the, the uh, change in structure of our borrowing is one of the things that has gotten us to where we are. See, when you have multilateral loans, loans from IMF, loans from World Bank, it's pretty easy to negotiate when you can't pay. But if you have a lot of private loans, Ghana has about 57% of its loans now from the, the private capital market. Because when the concept was, it was introduced, most developing countries went into borrowing, claiming they want to develop their infrastructure. If you look at our infrastructure, it's still in shambles. But we've taken a lot of money. Now, Ghana's uh, debt is about 80% of our GDP, which is very huge. So an investor looking at that is not uh, so comfortable. And then you look at uh, look at production. Take the poultry industry, for example. We import close to 90% of what we consume. And you cannot solve problems like that in the short term because you, people are already addicted to uh, consumption of that. So what the government, the sense I have is that going to the IMF, they want to create new space for borrowing because there's no way out. Once they go to IMF, they're going to go back to the capital market, the private uh, equity market, and start shopping for more loans, which will worsen the situation. So no matter the amount that they will borrow at this point, it's not going to be easy in the first place to get that because cost of capital are borne up. Because the, the big economies are increase, increasing interest rates to deal with inflation in their country. So it means that any developing country going into that market is going to get a high price loan. And it's not even easy to sell the idea of getting money to developing countries. And Ghana is the is now in a, in a terrible situation. We all looked at our country that made a lot of progress, just crumbling economically because um, the management was not focused on protecting the interests of our country, but doing a lot of refinancing of existing loans in order to get fees and then engage in all kinds of practices that undermine confidence in investors. I want to go back to what you said. You said the problem was the change in approach. And then you also concluded by saying that we've all seen a system where uh, the managers of the economy, all they've done is to borrow money to service old loans in order for they themselves to benefit from the borrowing of this money. Is, is that what the problem is now? Is that what, the, is that the, what we are seeing are those the effects of the approach you've seen over the past few years? Sure. You know, Africa and most developing countries, the corruption we witness has the same template. See, the, it's not really Ghana that has done this, but I think Ghana copied it from other countries because most of them went into the private market to borrow. And then when they can't pay, they try to take other loans to retire old debts and then replace that. And in an attempt to uh, take a lot of money from it, the fees are pretty high. They can tell you that, oh, we are trying to lower interest rates on payment, repayment. But beneath that, there will be high fees that are charged in order to make the transaction go through. So in the end, they impose, it imposes a lot of burden on uh, the country because the cost of capital includes the fee. So it's just a strategy that they have used to actually uh, profit from our country. And the, you look at this, most of the economic managers, they are, they are more into, uh, you know, making this money, send the monies abroad, so it's not even benefiting local, uh, local economy. So in the end, there's a, there's a whole lot of 
uh, capital drift from one country to the other. So this practice has been in existence for a long time. But uh, nobody is fighting corruption. So nobody's looking at this and trying to find out whether retiring sex deaths have been prudent or not. You know, once they can borrow to service loans, because the serious debt crisis, uh, you know, in Africa, and Ghana has become a victim of it. Because to repay debt, it's not going to be easy. Now, the Ghana will have to default on some of each loans, I predict. And when that happens, it affects their rating more. And then whoever is coming to rehabilitate the economy will face a lot of problems. So I, I don't know the easy way out, but the government will have to go back to basics and try to see what they can do to restore uh, investor confidence. And I, I realize that you, you keep saying there are difficulties in terms of the approach to use at this point. You said we would, that's a prediction that Bloomberg has put forward, a lot of professors who have looked at our, both internally, externally, who have looked at our situation says we cannot avoid default. Why is that being said? Is it because we cannot get access to dollars to keep refinancing all those uh, expensive debts? You see, we, we have depleted a lot of our assets. Anytime there's crisis, we look for easy solution. And anytime you, you know, you're dealing with the economy, you're not building your private sector where you can tax people to raise money internally to deal with certain things. You are not cutting down waste. You are not, you know, trying to create new financial space that can allow you to service your debt. You definitely will have to be in a terrible situation. So anybody predicting that we can pay our debt is not going to be, um, you know, disappointed because they're, they're certainly going to come a day when we can, uh, you know, service our loan. The internal economic dy dynamics will affect our ability. And there's still, you know, there are a couple of things that can be done. You see, we have local substitutes to some of the imports. How do we disincentivize imports? Because that is where our problem is majorly from. And this government going into the capital market also increased. So government is basically helpless because they don't have the efficacy to, uh, you know, pay some of their bills without looking for unconventional sources like borrowing to pay basic for basic things. And then the price of energy is also going to keep going up because the oil companies are now trying to make a lot out of uh, you know the situation we have now. So oil prices will keep going up. United States, for example, in order to deal with their uh, internal situation, uh, difficulties, they open their reserve. They have a lot of oil reserve. So they open that into the market, and that has brought down the prices. So once the prices go down, it affects a lot of activities in the economy. It helps the ordinary people. And also, they are, a lot of the states are now giving money to people to help stimulate the economy, because when they give them money, they'll go out there and spend. Ghana doesn't. Ghana can't do that, but that is not part of Ghana's plan. So the difficulties will continue to escalate, and I, I think the uh, economic managers have failed. There's nothing, you know, more we can say about them than they be incompetent in many respects. Uh, yeah, the second one was. In fact, we have been hearing this assessment for a while. They insist and continue to insist and that it, it is not them but they were confronted with covid then they were confronted with russia and ukraine before then they were doing well in fact one of the things they are fighting of today is yeah is the description that has been given by a professor of economics in the u.s who calls uh 
uh, Ghana becoming a poster boy of economic mismanagement. How do you reconcile the two? You you agree that even where you are in the U.S., they are struggling with the after effects of COVID and the Russia Ukraine crisis. But then you are accusing our managers of incompetence when they are also saying that they are confronting same problems. You see, in the in the U.S. or other countries, the impact has been minimal because the economy has been structured such so that. You can do one thing and the economy will respond to it. In Ghana, for example, Ghana is still a cash economy. People don't spend from credit, they spend from income. So the moment the real income diminished, uh, you look at workers' pay, it has not increased. So definitely, when the workers take their salary now to the market where inflation is over 30%, they've been so weakened. So even those who produce locally, the market is not there for them. So the structure of the economy is making, yes, our situation uh, different. But look at our neighbors. Look at countries that have the same characteristics as Ghana. They seem to be doing well and more resilient than us. Because most of the decisions that we made, for example, the uh, SHS, um, free HS, uh, SHS uh, program was not structured well because it was meant to give welfare to the rich. When you have a rich person, uh, children uh, going to school free just like any other person, even in the U.S. it's not done that way. The rich pay a lot of taxes. So when they go to school and don't pay, it's actually uh, fair. But in Ghana, the concept is that um, Everybody should go to school free. You give them free food and all that, and your economy is not strong enough to support such decisions. And there are all kinds of uh, decisions that the economic management team made that created this problem. Huge recurring expenditure. The government-owned companies, the, the cost of running them actually went up because of the positions this government created in most of the organizations. And they were not looking at uh, trying to break even like a private enterprise would do. So the huge cost of running our government, corruption also contributing significantly to it. Uh, the culture of trying to live in the West and also in Ghana. So a lot of money that is um, gained from corruption in Ghana is repatriated here. Sometimes to basically uh, pay for taxes on houses that they own. There are a lot of politicians who now try, try to buy houses here. And they pay, the, they pay a lot to our government here. So given all these decisions, and looking at the United States, the way they are managing the economy, many other countries uh, who naturally would have suffered, they, they managed it very, very well. And some of them already restructured their economy, say that. You know, situations in situations like this, they could deal uh, effectively with it. Look at the monies that came to Ghana government since the COVID uh, pandemic started. Where are the monies? What were they doing with it? You know, because all these were meant to kind of question the, the very situation we are faced with today. But they were recklessly spent and then certain things were not done properly. Now, they can't go and renegotiate on repayment of private loans. If we had stayed with IMF for a long time, it would have actually helped us in a way because they discourage going excessively to the capital market. And that means our national debt would have been lower than uh, what it is now. So you look at the economic management difference, you can't tell that those in the West did pretty good. Even as today, today, you can visibly see what they are doing to change the, you know, the situation, to deal with it. But in Ghana, I don't think there's anything more that our leaders are doing, apart from trying to get more loans to do what they've done over the years. Nothing is changing. Prof, uh, let, let, uh, Doc, let, let me end with you on this note, uh, because okay. you, you talk about the difficult solutions that have to be deployed. There are those who are looking forward to 2024. 
because they are hoping that in 2024 there will be a, ch a change in the government then there will be a change in approach by a new government who look at things differently but two years is a long time within these two years we could be sri lanka we could be argentina we could be in a very mm -hmm. bad situation what needs to be done immediately there are those who suggested best move very first move take off the finance minister he, he, his approach is unhelpful uh, but what needs to be done first and uh, most importantly well, at least rescue the well, situation in the meantime well in, in the, the, taking down the finance minister is critical because it tells the world that look Ghana is ready to go uh, or, you know towards new direction so symbolically, to help if the finance minister is out and a new person comes in, and that person will have more gravitas to come up with certain policies. Number one, I think imports is what is causing us a great deal. You see, if we allow imports, um, if we allow certain local products to substitute bread, we can do away with bread. If we are not getting the you know, uh, bread material, we can easily encourage local uh, consumption of other substitutes. And you look at the cost of uh, petroleum products, we are net exporters of oil. So what we can do is that government can come out today and say, look, nobody should drive V8. All government officials will now take buses. And then you provide the buses, you have reduced the uh, consumption of oil. So in that sense, the price of, I mean, the import will have to also reduce. Because the import is in the messes. We depend so much on foreign products. So that can help in the short term, um, you know, to reduce the burden on government. And also the size of the government can also be taken care of. Certain organizations can be consolidated some positions can be eliminated, and then organizations will begin to make profit. Because look at the energy sector alone, how much government uh, put into that, and then a whole lot of waste is coming from there, and corruption. So if we can also look at uh, short-term measures like uh, solar alternative source of energy for all government ministries, if they are to now be uh, provided with solar, it takes them from the national grid, then the cost of energy is going to uh, reduce. Cost of running our, uh, you know, various sources of energy. So when this is done, and then I think the HSS program also should be scrapped. We should go back to a situation where gradually we debordernize schools. You know, America is a trillion dollar economy. We don't have boarding schools here. Because the cost of feeding is very high. People should go to schools in their local community and all that. And then the government should also be symbolic. For example, some of them should begin to give up on some of um, uh, the benefits. You take, for example, the Council of State. Why do we have it? We can take down organizations like that to reduce the burden on government. Recurrent expenditure keep going up. It means that our appetite for borrowing will be sustained, will be there for a long time because we need to do all this. And also, when we get into IMF program, whatever we get, we should focus on long-term investments because we have to change the structure of the economy. We need to now take into agriculture, which is very easy to go into and begin to uh, produce for our local economy and free ourselves from depending on uh, dependence on uh, foreign support, foreign food, and all that. Doc, uh, thank you very much yes. for making time to speak to us this morning. Okay, my brother. It's been a great pleasure. Mm. Uh, Dr. Justice Salifu is based in the U.S. He's president of Moore Institute of Technology. It's a pleasure talking to him. Uh, start